Oh my God! What happened, Goggle? I forgot to make a model for my science class. Why do I keep forgetting these simple things? It's so frustrating. Sometimes I wish my brain could work like a computer. Hmm, but that is not possible, Goggle. I know, Toggle, but how can a computer store so much information in its memory while I cannot? <laughs> Goggle, I can understand your situation, and I believe I can answer your question. Really, Toggle? I had always wondered about the great memory of a computer. The storage capacity of a computer is called its memory. Memory enables the computer to store data, instructions, and information. What are all those data, instruction, and information in a computer? Data are facts, figures, or words that we want the computer to work on. Instructions are the commands that tell the computer how to work on the given data. Information is the result or the output given by the computer. Okay, got that. So far, so good. Toggle, our teacher told us that although it has a great memory, a computer, however, is only able to understand two digits. Is it true? Yes, Goggle. A computer understands only two digits, zero and one. The input data are first converted into zeros and ones for the computer to understand them. Zero and one are called binary digits or bits. Each value is a bit. What is a bit? A bit is the smallest chunk of information a computer can work with. Now, a computer language represented in bits is known as a binary language. Eight bits make up a byte. A byte is denoted by capital B. So, one byte is equal to eight bits. Oh, that's where the term bytes comes from. <laughs> yes, Goggle. It is because the memory of a computer is represented in bytes. A byte is the unit of measuring a computer's memory. Are there any other units of measuring memory? Yes. Look at this table. It provides the higher units of memory. Goggle. Now look at this figure. It shows the types of memory in a computer. Toggle. This chart seems very complex. Can you explain it to me, please? Sure, Goggle. A computer has three types of memory. Primary memory, read-only memory or ROM, and secondary memory. Why these different types, Toggle? Well, Goggle, the primary memory of a computer is its internal memory and is the main area in a computer where data, instructions, and information are stored. This memory can be directly accessed by the CPU. The CPU accesses the memory in a random manner. Hence, it is also called random access memory. Okay, so that is what a RAM is in a computer. Yes, RAM is also called read or write memory as we can read information from it as well as write on it. The CPU can access data from RAM only till the time the computer is switched on. Why toggle? Because RAM loses its contents when the power is turned off and so it is also known as volatile memory. So, isn't there any permanent memory in a computer? Oh yes, Goggle. ROM or read-only memory is the permanent memory of a computer, and normally it cannot be rewritten or changed. So, ROM does not lose its contents when the power is turned off, right? Yes, it does not. Read-only memory retains its contents even when the power is turned off. So, it is also known as non-volatile memory. Now I get it, Toggle. So, is this where all our files and folders are saved when we give the save command? <laughs> Good question, Goggle. But the answer is no. Ah, so where do the files and folders go? They are stored in what is called a hard disk. A hard disk is a type of secondary memory. Okay. So what is secondary memory? Secondary memory or external memory is the name given to devices where programs and data can be stored for future purpose. Can you give me some more examples of secondary memory? Apart from the hard disk floppy disks, CDs or compact disks, DVDs or digital versatile disks, 
Blu-ray discs and flash drives or pen drives are examples of secondary memory. Toggle, what are Blu-ray discs? A Blu-ray disc is similar to a CD or DVD. However, it can hold up to 25 GB of data in it. Wow, that's awesome! Will a Blu-ray disc work from my DVD drive? No, your computer will require a Blu-ray reader. Why is it called a Blu-ray disc? Actually, the name Blu-ray is taken from the technology that is used to make these discs. Blue from the blue-violet laser and ray from an optical ray. I got it. Blue and ray makes it Blu-ray. Quite right, Goggle. Toggle, I had never imagined that there are so many types of memories in a computer. Now I will have to brush up my own memory to remember all this. But thanks, Toggle. It was interesting. <laughs> Anytime, Goggle. Keep your memory sharp.